Uh, hello again, everybody. Uh, your next speaker is me. Um, so I'm going to give you a very quick uh, update on the Free IPA project, uh, which is what I work on at Red Hat. So Free IPA is an identity management system, um, and what that basically means is it's a centralised place where you can store your user, host, and service identities in your organisation and your access policies, defining uh, who can access what. Uh, and where and under what conditions and so on. An identity management system will provide uh, authentication and authorization mechanisms that the uh, hosts and services uh, running in your organization can leverage to do those things. And uh, in centralizing the information, you improve security through enforcement of these policies uh, and productivity through reduction of, um, or repetition of labor, um, so that's sort of the flip flip side of the equation is um, if you don't have a centralised identity management system, that implies that your organisation contains a bunch of data silos, so you can see how that uh, becomes difficult to manage and expensive. So um, Free IPA, as I mentioned, is an identity management system. Um, it's what I work on at Red Hat. It's available um, as part of RHEL, as well as in a number of other distributions, uh, including Ubuntu. Uh, the major technologies involved are LDAP, uh, which is the database, Kerberos for authentication. There's a certificate authority component and uh, DNS server integration, which are optional. And we have uh, administrative tools and the client component, which is called SSSD. Uh, we can also integrate with Active Directory via cross-realm trusts. So if you're in an organization um, using AD for your user management, um, users in the Active Directory domain can get tickets to access the hosts and services enrolled in the free IPA domain. Uh, and the client component SSSD is available in all the distros where the server is, uh, as well as most of the others, and also Solaris and FreeBSD. Architecturally speaking, the, the block diagram is there, so um, you can see the critical components being MIT Kerberos um, 389BS, which is the LDAP server and an Apache front end providing uh, access to a whole bunch of plugins uh, which are running inside a Whiskey application that um, perform all of the administrative actions that you may require. Um, the optional components are dog tag, which is the CA, um, bind is the DNS implementation, and NTP is required for time synchronization. On the client, uh, we have SSSD, uh, which is the main component that manages the uh, authentication and authorization concerns, and also CertMonger, which is a uh, tool for automating certificate requests and renewals. So a couple of years ago at uh, Linux ConfAU in Auckland, uh, I gave a fairly comprehensive talk about uh, free IPA and where the project was at um, at that point in time. Since then, we've had a few major releases, um, and we're gearing up for the 4.5 release, so I just want to recap some of the security-related features that have arrived in the recent releases, and uh, also some of the exciting things we're working on for the future. Uh, so one big feature that is close to my heart as a uh, PKI wonk is the sub-CAs feature. So previously, all certificates uh, issued by a free IPA server were issued by a single CA. That could be a root CA, or it could be chained to uh, to some external CA, like from Active Directory um, or elsewhere. Uh, this is unfortunate because um, in this case, all certificates, cryptographically speaking, are in a single domain of validity. Um, so if you have certificates issued for different purposes, for example, um, service certificates for your you know, websites or uh, email servers in your organization versus uh, user client certificates for connecting to a VPN. Uh, unfortunately, they'll, they'll all be considered um, valid um, if you're anchoring your trust at a particular CA. So um, we implemented lightweight sub-CAs where basically, as you can see uh, on the right of this slide, um, assuming you're um, an administrator with the required privileges, you can just create a new CA on the fly um, and it's just a simple command and you can then begin uh, issuing certificates from that CA. Um, and there are also access control rules defining which CAs and which profiles can be used together for which particular kinds of subjects. 
For example, uh, you can limit issuance to a sub-CA whose purpose is for issuing VPN client certificates, um, and you can only use the VPN cert uh, profile together with that CA for users uh, who have membership in the VPN users group, just as an example. Another important security feature is Kerberos Authentication Indicator. So previously, if you could acquire a Kerberos ticket for a service, that service would let you in. Uh, what customers were wanting is a way to say, well, this is a particular high value service. We would like to require that users accessing this service have obtained their Kerberos ticket granting ticket um, via a process that included a two-factor authentication login. So the authentication indicator provides this feature. The way it works is when you get your initial ticket um, from the Kerberos key distribution center, that ticket includes information about how you authenticated. So if you used two-factor authentication, that um, information will be present in the uh, ticket granting ticket and will be propagated to service tickets uh, when those are issued. The service can then inspect the ticket that it receives perform the usual authentication, and then once that passes, examine the uh, authentication indicator information, and if it requires two-factor authentication, uh, which is straightforward to configure, and it doesn't see that in the authentication indicator, then it can say, go away, um, please go and re-authenticate to the KDC using two-factor authentication, and come back then. Uh, a few other things worth a mention are the uh, Kerberos KDC proxy. So you have, if you have users uh, outside your network that need to access the KDC to get a ticket, um, but the usual Kerberos ports are blocked, so this is a fairly common scenario, they can now communicate with the KDC over HTTP um, ports, so 80 or 443. We have support for custom certificate profiles now. Um, password Vault, which is basically a, a secret store solution. Uh, Kerberos principal aliases, um, which allow users to change their username and also load balancing for services. Smart card login for Active Directory users and a topology management plugin. A few things in the pipeline of interest. Uh, network bound encryption, uh, which is based on a new cryptographic algorithm, which itself is based on Diffie-Hellman. Diffie-Hellman is a two-party key agreement protocol. Um, McCallum Rally is a two-party key computation protocol where only the client can recompute the secret. So it has very good privacy guarantees, requires the cooperation of the original server to recompute the secret. So the use case here is if you have disks with full disk encryption or uh, workstation um, disks that need to be encrypted, when they're inside the secure network, inside the corporate firewall, these systems can just come up without uh, operator intervention. But if you go outside the network where the, um, where the server is not available, um, no dice, you'll need to put in the passphrase or do something differently. Um, similarly, if you need to throw a disk out um, using a system like this, just throw it out, don't need to worry about wiping it. We also have a client-side secret management tool called Clevis, um, which among other things implements uh, or allows you to implement interesting hierarchical um, key unlock policies using Shamir's secret sharing. And Joey Hess, in, in his talk at the beginning of the security mini-conf, uh, was also talking about Shamir's secret sharing. We also have user session recording in the works, um, which is required by some customers and users to satisfy audit or legal requirements. Um, so that's basically going to record all the activity through the, uh, through the TTY. Um, store all the events in Elasticsearch, and there you can um, monitor that for interesting events or replay sessions. We also have Kerberos PK in it with smart cards um, under development, so that will allow you to use a smart card to obtain a ticket granting ticket. Um, SSSD secrets as a service, and the big project I'm working on is hardening the communications between free IPA and the dog tag CA component um, currently. We have a bit of a lack of privilege separation there. That's led to a number of CVEs, so I'm uh, reworking how those communications uh, occur and are authenticated. Uh, resources, freeipa.org is the main site. Uh, the users mailing list is free, well, what you see on the slides, freeipa users at redhat.com. 
um, free IPA is the channel on Freenode. Um, I've got stickers, uh, but I didn't bring them with me, so I'll put them down on the stickers table uh, near the Rego desk uh, come tomorrow. Uh, if you have questions or want to know more about free IPA, come see me anytime. I'm, I'm here all week. Um, okay, so with that out of the way, I'm going to do a quick conference wrap now before I hand over to our final speaker.